Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. This is Karen, Lavender Clothesline. And today I have a little bit of a mishmash. I have some footage from a Goodwill shopping trip where I do a voiceover. And I have uh, crazy high profit thrift finds. And what else? I think that's it for this video. So please hit that like and subscribe button and we will get started. So today I did a lot of clothes shopping but figured I would check the hard goods section like I normally do. Now my cart is filled to overflowing with clothing. It was a really good clothing pickup day and I will be doing a clothing haul probably next week sometime. I'm busy like photographing and listing all of the things but I will be showing you what great clothes I found and today I just figured I would pop over to the hard goods side. I can never leave this store without looking at hard goods. There I was looking at a few pipes. I don't know much about pipes, but I have sold a few with heads or faces on them, and that's what I look for. When I got to the store this morning, it was very crowded. I had to actually look for a parking space, but I never let that deter me. So in I went, filled my cart with clothing, like I said, and now I'm just bringing you along with me for hard goods. I don't think there's a market for these telephones, but I thought those were cool. It doesn't seem that long ago we were all using those types of phones. So strange. You know me, I always pull boxes down and here they are wine glasses and that's what the box said. I never pick up wine glasses. I thought this ornament was very cool. This was a lion in military, like a safari outfit, and he was very well made, but I didn't see a marking on him, and I felt kind of on the fence about him, so I left him. I do have a tendency to look at Corel, Pyrex, things like that, but I don't pick up a lot of it. I do pick up the Cinderella nesting balls when they were in pink or blue, and recently I found them in brown, which does not bring as much money as the colored ones, the pretty colored ones. Guys, I almost picked up this box because it said acid cigars. Now, cigar boxes generally don't bring a lot of money. People do crafts with them, um, I've seen cigar boxes turned into guitars and banjos, but I thought that acid one was quite good, but I wound up leaving it behind. Today the employees were really on it, bringing out a lot of hard goods. We could all barely keep up. I love when the store is like that. Some days the hard goods come out quite slow and other days you hit it just right. And it is like a treasure hunt, but along with 50 other people. So, um, but I, I love the hunt, so I never mind. There's plenty for everybody, that's my motto. I do have a tendency to look in these wooden boxes. Now I don't pick up artist kits, maybe I should, I don't know very much about them, but I have a tendency to look for backgammon games and what else do I look for? Um, wooden boxes or wooden, yeah, carry boxes that are for doll clothing, I pick those up. And I think you'll see later in this video where I look at backgammon games. This casserole was catching my attention. I thought it was nicely made, but the rim was not glazed. When you see the rim and it's not glazed, I'm not positive, but I don't think that's high quality. I think a clay or a pottery dish is supposed to have all edges glazed. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong about that. I could be wrong. This is a set of canisters that I Instagrammed about. Um, they are the wedge set by Lincoln. 
beauty wear and they had rust in them or I would have definitely taken those. Those are true mid-century modern in my opinion. I came around the corner and this painting was propped up against an end cap. I thought this was beautiful. It caught my attention right away. There I am feeling the front of it to see if it was actually painted or if it was uh, a print. And the first thing I do always is look at the back of the canvas. Here you can see that the canvas is quite new. There's no age to it and it has been stapled on and I don't see any signs of it being, you know, valuable. But I thought this was quite beautiful. I'm not sure who the artist is. I didn't see a signature. And this could be the biggest mistake of my life that I left it behind. And we are on to the white section. I do like these type of stone plaques. I like decorating with them in my house. But like I've said in the past, I have so much stuff that I'm trying to get rid of things in my house. I like to downsize and simplify. Now I didn't care for the motif on this teapot. I didn't care for the colors, but it's not always about my taste. So here you see Elgrave. That company can bring some decent money in pots, but I didn't think that pattern was good enough to carry that. So that's why I did not pick that up. Always checking boxes. If this hanging, um, I'm going to call this a chandelier, if the crystals had been real glass or crystal, I would have picked that last hanging light up, a luminary or a photo. It was meant for a candle, but the crystals were plastic or acrylic, so I left that behind. Now I don't know a lot about china or dishes, but you know, most items are marked and you can do comps, you can run comps on them. So they would have to bring crazy good money for me to pick them up though. And as usual, I just do a quick, a quick look-see over the glass. I'm really not crazy about clear glass. There are a few brands, of course, I would pick up. I would pick up Lalique. Um, who else would I would pick up? I'm trying to think of what other names that I gravitate towards. Truthfully, sometimes I can't get off the clear glass aisle quick enough. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what color aisle this was. I guess it was orange and beige. Some of these aisles get very mixed with everybody picking things up and putting them back. Here I see a large uh, fork and spoon in front of this napkin holder. And I don't know that the fork and spoon still bring money. For a while there, they were bringing good money. And again, I might have made a mistake. I did not check comps on that. So if you have sold large wooden vintage forks and spoons, you know, wall hanging, would you leave a comment down below? I will probably run comps after I record this for you guys, just to see if I missed out on something. That's a piece, original piece from Party Light. A lot of times the boxes don't have you know, what's supposed to be in them. So I try to always make sure to take a peek. I 
I'm thinking this day I probably had, I'm gonna say 70 to 80 pieces of clothing in my cart. So I think when I already have a lot in my cart, it causes me to be even pickier with what I bring home. So of course I'm not gonna say no to you know anything that's gonna bring good profit, but I think I really just become more selective when I already have a full cart loaded. When I shop for clothing, I take everything off the hangers and pack it down. And this day I had the large cart. This Goodwill has two size carts and I almost always take the large cart. Some more stemware that somebody packed up. Now I imagine there could be stemware that's very valuable. I just have no interest at this point in photographing clear glass or shipping stemware. Even tumbler glasses or wine glasses are easier to ship because they don't have those fragile break points like wine glasses do. So as a, as a whole, I stay away from stemware. Here we're looking at a lot of tchotchka. I did wind up the carousel horse on the bottom and um, he did not play properly. So I left that behind. This owl is very interesting to me. I kind of loved him and put him on top of all the clothing, but in the end I put him back. I didn't feel there was enough profit capability again. It's just a little handmade piece from Florida. Okay, so these statues, because there were three that told me most likely they were mass produced, cheap quality, I lifted one up, very lightweight, when you find a well-made statue, the weight of it is usually, usually heavy for the size of it. I don't know if that's always true, but that's what I've found to be true. Okay, this painting or drawing here is catching my attention. I don't think the subject is that attractive, but what's capturing my attention is see the line in the middle of the print? this line, the fold line, that was interesting to me. I'm looking at this signature, trying to even read what it says. One of the things I didn't like about the signature was that the eye dotted was a very large circle. I don't know why that bothered me, but <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. So I wound up leaving that behind. I wasn't able to read the signature well enough to get a clear name to comp. These were interesting. These are samples for, I think this was Corian countertops. And I, I'm sure they're good for crafts, but way too heavy to ship. When I was a young girl, I'd be outside a lot digging. I was one of those children. Just give me a shovel and I was happy. And I think I'm still doing that. I'm digging. This was pretty art glass, just a, a wind twirler. I'm not quite sure what those are called, but you hang them from a tree or outside and the wind twirls them. And here we have another case. I always look in these cases. So what I'm looking for is these little playing pieces to be big light. You want to Google Bakelite if you don't know how to identify it. One of the ways I believe is that Bakelite originally had formaldehyde and when you rub the playing piece between your fingers, it emits like a formaldehyde scent. There's also different ways of telling more about whether you have Bakelite. I know there's a 409 cleaner sprayed on it and there's another cleaner. Again, you can Google it. You want to learn how to tell Bakelite because Bakelite can bring very good money. Bakelite is the uh, precursor to our plastics. I try to take the little booklet out of the case and see what date is on the booklet. So this one's 1978, so these would not have been Bakelite. I leave it behind. Now, not to say these games won't bring money. They might, but I'm specifically looking for the ones that have the Bakelite playing pieces. I think I should have taken a better shot of my cart. I'm just realizing it now. That cart was packed, very heavy. It was one of those days where every rack I looked at had good things on it. So yes, please, I will have it all.
I've looked at this little acorn thing quite a few times. It just looks like a modern, you know, modern piece. I knew most likely Clinique was not in that package. A lot of times a vintage mushroom motif is very desirable. If you find it on canisters or fun kitschy kitchen pieces, but that was just a plain piece of wood, so I didn't feel it was all that desirable. I left it behind. Here we have another bad cabin set. <laughs> it was a popular thing. A lot of times the bake light pieces look marbled, so if you see the solid pieces, it doesn't mean they're not bake light, but if you see the marbled ones, that's where you want to take a second look. This I dug out. I believe this was the horse's saddle for American Girl doll. But at this level, I have a lot, quite a lot that I'm uh, trying to push through listings. So when I have a lot to process, I will really hone my skills and just pick up what's desirable. When I have less to process, when, when the inventory room is open and ready to go, I'm a little more lenient with what I pick up. I think this week I probably picked out between 200 and 250, maybe 200 pieces to push through. So uh, today I believe I got 30 listings on. I think that's where I'm at and just pushing, always pushing to get lots of inventory through. There's a shot of my cart. <laughs> I'm glad I did, I did film it. This is a massive amount of clothing. This cart is big. There's the owl. He was still up there. But like I said, I did put him back. I had everything in this cart this day. Everything from men's clothing to, oh, all kinds of craziness. Here I'm spotting um, paddle ball rackets or paddles. Um, I believe these are vintage. They're wood. I'm not quite sure. I'm not very knowledgeable about them. I did run a comp and the, the comps were okay. So I left them behind. I always love after I put out a video like this, a shop with me video, when you guys comment what you would have pulled off the shelf. I think that's very cool and I can look back and see what I missed and what you guys, what your eye caught. So I always appreciate that. I thought this journal was cool. It was made in the Bahamas. The paper was handmade. And there's a little wooden kitty cat, <laughs> but he had a chip on his paw. So I left him behind for somebody else to buy. I used to pick up quite a few of the Victoria's Secret tote bags, uh, weekenders, things like that. I try to always find new ones and I've stopped picking them up because the market is saturated. I thought this little stove was cute. And I almost picked this up for Dollhouse, but they wanted $5, which I felt was a little bit high. It's a collector's piece. I didn't think the quality was there and $5 I felt was too much to pay. Items like that sometimes can take a very long time to sell. Has to be the right scale for that person's dollhouse, so I left that behind. So I think this is gonna finish up this shopping trip and I will be absolutely showing a haul of what I did come home with, what I picked up. I did find hard goods. Somehow they didn't make it into this filming but thank you so much for watching. Please go into Instagram and see my invitation to the resellers meetup we're gonna have on February 27th. So far we have, I think about 40 people on the list. So it promises to be a great night. And as always, go out and get what's yours. Bye guys.
Welcome back to another episode of Crazy High Profit Thrift Finds. So this first item, I had no idea what this was, but I thought it looked very cool. And I just went by what the tag said, Woodstock Imperial Iron Bell Chimes. $69.30 it brought, and I paid, I believe, $4.50. The next item I don't pick up a lot of. This is a mixed lot of Gorham. These are stainless steel covered in sterling silver plate, I believe. So I don't pick up a lot of these sets. I thought this one was especially pretty. Took a long time to sell, but $85.12 and I paid $6.50. The next item I think a lot of you were watching, very unique find. Again, I just went by the aesthetic and how well made it was. 8702, it's a mid 20th century Chinese boy statue holding a peach. <laughs> The next item I put into these finds because I thought $45.90 was exceptionally good for a Lily Pulitzer dress. I paid $5.25. Next up, Cabela's Men's Boots, $69.84, and these were pre-owned, so don't pass up the boots. They have a lot of profit in the boot section. The next item I did show on Instagram because I was thrilled with this profit, $54.38, and this is Philosophy. If you comp them, this brand does not bring a high price, but I thought the embroidery was especially beautiful, and I said yes. The next up we expect Lululemon always brings the money, especially if it's a jacket, a dress, or a pair of pants. The tank tops can sit for a while and not bring that much money unless there's something really rare. But this jacket brought $54.95. The next up, I've recently announced that I'm kind of stopping picking up mugs. I've had these for a couple of months. $25.80 was a very good return on my investment for two cups, and I believe I paid a dollar or two for these. The next up I actually put in my Instagram and I tried it on. This is Trina Turk, $58.96 for an all-over sequined top. This came into my store and back out it went very quick. I showed this on a recent haul. This was a Calvin Klein beautiful blue puffer jacket, $88, and I believe I paid $10 for this. The next up is Avon. Yep, Avon made track suits. I don't think this was recently. I think this was quite a while ago. I found two of these and they both sold around the $50 mark. This is a baby doll carriage. It was a genuine antique and I wound up paying, I believe, $6 for this. I sat on this for years. I'm going to say I had this in my store over two years. $51 was still a very good profit for a baby doll carriage. This jacket I showed in my Instagram. I tried it on on YouTube. I was in love with this jacket. $125 always wins over me keeping something. So I paid, I believe, $7.50 for this beautiful jacket. This camera brought really good profit, $125.62. I have no knowledge of cameras. I just picked it up. It seemed like, you know, it was a decent pickup. I did run comps and I saw that there was some profit capability for this. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys aren't aware, we are having a Central Pennsylvania Resellers Meetup. Now anyone can attend, everybody is welcome, but everybody's RSVP has to be in by Monday, the 24th of February. The event is the following Thursday, which is the 27th of February at Loxley's Restaurant. And if you'd like to attend, we'd love to meet you and chat with you. We're talking all things reselling and our list is growing to Today is something, what is today? Friday, and we have about two or three more weeks, but already our list is about the 50 mark, 50 people. So if everybody comes out, we are promising to have a great time. And as always, go out and get what's yours. Mm -hmm.